Hey, I'm Matt Lauder, and today we're going to be talking about dynamics, specifically compressors and gates and their basic controls and what they all do. Okay, so what is a compressor? A compressor reduces or squishes the loud parts of an audio signal while keeping the quieter parts unaffected. It's a very useful tool for keeping your audio sources and your overall mix under control. There's five main controls of a compressor that we'll talk about. There's threshold, ratio, attack, release, and gain. Some compressors may have more or less controls, but these are the most common ones. Okay, let's take a look at our console and we'll get a visual and an, an audio representation of what a compressor does. Okay, the first control is the threshold. The threshold tells the compressor when to start working or when to start compressing the audio signal. Let's switch over to this guy for a better visual. So right now, the, the compressor isn't actually being used. It, it's on, it's, there's audio passing through it, but it's not actually compressing because I'm not talking loud enough. But if I raise my voice, it starts to compress. So what it's doing is it's squishing the signal so that uh, it doesn't tear your face off when somebody yells into a mic. It's keeping it very safe and very in in a very very tight pocket. Um, if we we can we can exaggerate the threshold by dropping it even lower, and you can see that it starts to really compress very heavily. And you can probably hear right now that it takes a lot of the life out of it, uh, and it's it's instantly squishing it way more than it should. But it's a good visual, so you can see. If I talk very quiet, it's compressing a little bit. But if I raise my voice, it's compressing a lot. Okay, the next control is ratio. In simple terms, the ratio defines how much the signal is reduced after it hits the threshold. So a simple ratio of two to one indicates that a signal exceeding the threshold by two dB will be attenuated or shrunk down by one dB. So here's an example with some pink noise. Okay, so here we have a compressor. We're sending some pink noise into it. Um, it's not on right now and we have a 2 to 1 ratio. So you can see the in and the out are the same. Uh, as soon as I turn the compressor on, you'll notice that now we're attenuating by about 1.5 dB. So now we're going 2 dB over the threshold. Let's push it to 4 and see what, what the changes are. As you can see, the threshold is staying the same, but if we raise it to 4 to 1, let's say, now it's compressing twice as much. Simple math. Most compressors have an, an infinity to one setting, meaning it won't let anything past the threshold at all. And I'll show you that right now. Go all the way up to 100 to 1. So now nothing is going above the threshold. Okay, so now that we've learned about threshold and ratio, let's talk about the timing of compression, which is attack and release. Attack is when the compressor starts compressing once it hits the threshold, and the release is how long it takes for the compressed signal to go back to the threshold. It's kind of hard to explain, uh, so let's visualize it at the same time. So the attack is kind of hard to visualize because it's so fast, but the release we can slow it way down and it has pretty much the same principles, so you can, you can kind of get it. So what I'm gonna do is clap into the mic and you should see very quickly that the meters go up and it compresses very quickly after that, but it, not instantaneously. Okay, so what you saw there was me clapping and the compressor kicking in 300 milliseconds after I clapped. So now let's take it all the way back to the other end with just 10 milliseconds of attack so you'll see how it compresses almost instantly. So I don't know if you noticed, it's very subtle, but it is very effective. Okay, now let's talk about release. The release is how long it takes for your compressed signal to go from its full compression back to the threshold. And it's a lot easier to visualize. Check this out. So right now, we're compressing very heavily with a very fast attack and release, as you can see and hear. But if I slow down the release, you'll see what happens. Let's go to one second of release. Hey, two. Three, check. So now you can see it's taking one full second to release the compressed signal back to the threshold. So it's a little abrupt. You don't, probably don't want to do that live, but it's a good visualization. Okay, now that we have our perfect compressed signal, we've figured out our threshold, our ratio, attack and release, we have to worry about gain because we are compressing the signal and we're making it quieter. So now we have to worry about the output gain or the makeup gain 
which is essentially just turning it up enough that it matches the input. So now you have a really nice compressed signal that is at a good volume. Okay, so now we have our compressed signal. Uh, the, the peaks are nicely controlled and squished. The middle range and the quieter stuff stays there. It's very nicely controlled. We just have to boost up the output so that it matches the in and the out. Just like this. Output gain. There we go. Now we have a nice balanced compressed signal and the input and the output are matched. The best thing you can do to learn more about compressors is to just plug a mic into one and play around with it. Once you get a grasp on how to properly compress a signal, it'll open up a whole new world of mixing abilities and make your mixes a lot more dynamic, safe, and fun.